Hello everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Virtual Lab series of video blog presentations on various diverse scientific computing topics. As you can see here, the title of today's presentation is on the topic of how density functional theory computational techniques can be employed for the purpose of novel catalyst materials development and R&D. This presentation is provided by Virtual Lab, the company behind the development of the Materials Square online platform. Materials Square is entirely dedicated to assisting and encouraging researchers from across the world to perform atomistic computational simulations on a wide range of materials science and molecular chemical modeling applications, directly via our integrated powerful cloud computing resources. Being entirely online based, and executable via any basic web browser interface on any device with internet access, the Materials Square platform makes it possible to execute such complex simulations and calculations without the need to install any complicated scientific code locally on your machine, and without the need to have expensive supercomputing clusters at your immediate disposal. Our supported atomistic simulation functionalities and solutions are mainly based on well-established scientific computational techniques such as density functional theory and classical molecular dynamics, and have a very broad range of useful applications in computational chemistry and materials science R&D, which are thus ideally suited for both industrial and academic users from around the globe. We invite our viewers to please consult our products and services offered via the Materials Square platform by visiting its corresponding website, which is www.matsku.com, as noted also in the video description below. So, let us begin our main scientific presentation of today. Catalyst materials in general play a fundamental role in the water-splitting chemical reactions for the abundant generation and production of hydrogen, and in the fuel cell devices where such hydrogen can then be burned in order to generate energy in a sustainable and environmentally friendly fashion. Such technologies therefore hold a very promising potential in tackling climate change, by providing alternative sources of energy to the burning of fossil fuels and the associated release of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere such as carbon dioxide. Moreover, catalysis can offer further assistance in addressing the climate crisis, by facilitating those chemical reactions through which carbon dioxide can be captured from the atmosphere and converted into other useful liquid or solid products. At the center of this whole hydrogen-centered economy and energetic cycles we find crucially important chemical reactions that occur at the surface of the catalyst material under consideration. The most notable of such chemical reactions include the hydrogen evolution reaction, or HER, and the oxygen evolution reaction, or OER which together determine the water decomposition and splitting process. Furthermore, we encounter the oxygen reduction reaction, or OR, in the fuel cells that produce electricity using hydrogen and oxygen, as well as the carbon dioxide reduction reaction, or CO2RR, at the core of reactions for converting carbon dioxide into value-added derived product substances. In general, there is consequently an urgent need to design and develop ever more performing electrochemical catalyst materials capable of accelerating the rate of these various different chemical reactions. In most electrochemical reactions, catalysts based on noble metals, especially platinum, are known to have the best performance. However, the main problem when it comes to developing and manufacturing such noble metal-based catalysts is that the global mineral reserves are relatively sparse and unevenly distributed across the world. This in turn has contributed to making such platinum-based catalyst materials very expensive, and impractical for the large-scale industrial development and commercialization of water electrolysis devices and fuel cells. Consequently, the main focus and objective of R&D efforts aimed at designing and discovering novel catalytic materials is to find inexpensive alternatives to replace noble metal-based catalysts that can still maintain the same excellent performance qualities. In this respect, great assistance in this endeavors can be provided by computational simulation techniques for the design and discovery of new material structures and compositions with certain desirable physical properties. Scientific computing can in fact serve to conduct a sort of pre-screening of the extremely vast space of all material configurations, in order to reduce the ensuing experimental synthesis efforts to only the most promising of such identified candidate structures with the most exceptional predicted properties and performance indicators. 
a large portion of computational efforts dedicated at discovering novel catalyst materials is today being conducted through the implementation of artificial intelligence and machine learning data mining and statistical techniques based on existing large databases of materials properties. This topic of AI-driven materials design and discovery has been narrated in other episodes in this virtual lab series of video blog presentations. However, in the context of the present discussion, we shall focus primarily on physics-based first principles techniques in the world of computational materials science, and in particular on the use of density functional theory, or DFD, methods in such computations. DFD is in fact the most widely used computational approach in the field of electrochemical catalyst development research. DFT in general allows one to perform quantum mechanical electronic structure calculations on solid crystalline materials, by relying on the theoretical cornerstone that all physical properties of any such solid state system composed of atomic nuclei and electrons are determined just by considering the electron density of the system in the ground state. This basic assumption thus effectively allows for the great practical simplification of the problem of solving the highly complex Schrödinger equation of a periodic and extended crystalline lattice, as shown in the present slide, which would otherwise be an intractable problem from an analytical point of view. Therefore, in practice, within the DFD method the total energy of the n-electron system is expressed as a functional of the ground state electron density, according to the celebrated hohenberg cohn theorem which establishes from a theoretical viewpoint the one-to-one -one correspondence between these two quantities, as summarized under the present slide. Using the fact that the electron density at which the total energy of the system is minimized corresponds to the actual electron density in the ground state of the crystalline system under consideration, the wave function and total energy of the corresponding n-electron system can consequently be obtained, in practice computationally via the implementation of an appropriate iterative self-consistent minimization algorithm. Using this DFD method, the Gibbs free energy and transition state energy between the catalyst surface and the reactant, according to the relevant reaction path, can thus be computed for each electrochemical reaction under investigation. In this way, the reaction mechanism can be analyzed at the atomic and electronic level, in a way which would be hardly possible experimentally. Based on these considerations, DFD computational methods can therefore be effectively applied to the identification of electrochemical reaction mechanisms and the resulting design of new high-performance catalyst materials. Let us now explain in greater detail how DFD can help in the calculation of the reaction rate of electrochemical reactions. In general, in electrochemical reactions, the free energy of each reaction step determines the electrochemical catalyst performance. In each of such reaction steps, an proton-electron transfer occurs, and the free energy of each reaction step changes according to the chemical potential of the proton-electron pair resulting from the externally applied voltage. This chemical potential is not however something which DFD methods can directly calculate. This said, a way around this issue has been formulated via the so-called computational hydrogen electrode, or CHE, model, first proposed by Norskov and co-workers from the Technical University of Denmark, which has nowadays been adopted as the most commonly used computational DFD-based approach for identifying the active sites of electrocatalysts and exploring the corresponding reaction mechanisms. Under the CHE model, the reference voltage of zero volt is defined as the equilibrium state of the hydrogen redox reaction. Therefore, at zero volt, the chemical potential of a proton-electron pair is equal to half the chemical potential of gaseous hydrogen molecules. Consequently, the chemical potential of the proton-electron pair can be obtained from the total energy of gaseous hydrogen molecules, which can be directly calculated using DFT. More precisely, accounting for the corrections due to the applied voltage and the pH of the electrolyte solution, the chemical potential of the proton-electron pair can be obtained as shown at the top of this slide. In addition, by including the zero-point energy and entropic correction, the adsorption gives free energy of the electrochemical reaction, including the chemical potential of n-proton-electron pairs under a given voltage and pH, can also be obtained through DFD computations as shown towards the bottom of the slide. Let us now review in more detail the most important electrochemical reaction types involved in the production and burning of hydrogen in fuel cells, as well as those revolving around carbon dioxide, together with their associated computational approaches. 
Let us start with the well-known oxygen evolution reaction, or OER. In the electrochemical reaction in water electrolysis, OER occurs simultaneously with the hydrogen evolution reaction, or HER. In the case of OER, it is usually necessary to react with four proton-electron pairs and form a double bond of oxygen molecules, which in turn requires higher voltage. Therefore, in this case, it is very important to design a catalyst material capable of achieving a high oxygen generation efficiency, by overcoming the slow reaction rate of OER even at a lower voltage. Each reaction step in the OER, according to the acidity of the electrolyte solution, is as illustrated in the present slide. In the chemical equations shown here, the asterisk indicates the surface of the catalyst material under consideration. The Gibbs free energy of each reaction step can thus be obtained by calculating the adsorption energy of OH, O, and OOH, upon adsorption on the catalyst surface, using DFD calculation methods. The Gibbs free energy diagrams for the reaction path of an ideal catalyst and a general catalyst are shown in the figure contained in this slide. As you can see, in the case of an ideal catalyst, each reaction step shows an energy difference of 1.23 electron volts, which corresponds to the standard reduction potential for oxygen generation. It follows that, if 1.23 volts are applied as an external voltage, the energy difference of each reaction step becomes precisely zero and the reaction can therefore occur without any additional energy. In practice, in the case of a general non-ideal catalyst, a voltage of more than 1.23 volts must be applied for such reactions to occur spontaneously. This additional applied voltage is defined as the theoretical overpotential, and it can be used as a measure of the OER catalytic activity. We now consider the alternative case of the oxygen reduction reaction, or OR. OR also has various reaction pathways depending on the type of electrolyte and the type of catalyst material under investigation. For the case of metallic catalyst surfaces, OR property prediction is mainly performed based on a four-electron associative mechanism. Each reaction step of this four-electron associative mechanism, according to the different types of electrolyte solutions, is as shown in this slide. Finally, we look into the case of the CO2 reduction reaction, or CO2R, which is generally employed to convert carbon dioxide into simple carbon compounds such as CO and HCOOH, as well as more complex industrially useful hydrocarbon-based products such as methane and methanol. Such type of reactions lend themselves very well for carbon capture, conversion, and storage applications. However, depending on the desired product, the reaction pathway to be considered, such as CC coupling, becomes very complicated. By way of an example, the present slide shows the various reaction pathways involved in the process of conversion of carbon dioxide into carbon monoxide. We now introduce the main cloud-based simulation scientific online platform dedicated to research on catalyst materials developed by Virtual Lab, which is called Catalytic, and is distinct from the main general materials square platform introduced in the beginning of this presentation. The website of this Catalytic platform, as shown in this slide, is https colon double forward slash ktlytic.io. The catalytic simulation platform can in general be employed for all R&D aimed at predicting the performance of electrochemical catalyst materials for their design and discovery from first principles, for the purpose of hydrogen production, storage and utilization, as well as those of carbon dioxide. Furthermore, within the catalytic platform, the performances of various electrochemical reactions can be evaluated in both acidic and alkaline conditions, by adjusting the corresponding pH input value. The figure displayed in this slide shows an example of reaction diagram that predicts the OR reaction characteristics of a certain catalyst material through the catalytic platform. We therefore invite the viewers of our presentation today to please give a go at trying and testing out the various functionalities for novel catalyst materials research and discovery included in the Catalytic platform, by visiting and creating an account on its corresponding website at https colon double forward slash ktalytic.io. This brings us to the conclusion of our presentation. Many thanks for your attention and we recommend once more to please give a try to our Materials Square online platform for executing atomistic materials and chemical computations directly on the cloud, by visiting its website at www.materialsquare.com. 
please do not hesitate to contact us by email, as shown here on this slide, in case you would like to obtain further information on the various R&D services and solutions that we provide at Virtual Lab. Many thanks again for your interest and your consideration.